So back when I was in medical school, I thought apple cider vinegar was just this woo-woo treatment that didn't have any scientific basis. But then I've heard so many of my patients swear by it. And then the internet says things like it can burn fat and it can reverse your diabetes and even fight infections. And some even say it can extend your life. So is apple cider vinegar this miracle cure or is it just a fad? Well, in this video, I wanna break down exactly what the latest evidence says about apple cider vinegar. And I wanna go over proven benefits and the miss and real risk you need to watch out for. So by the end of the video, you'll know whether this is something you need to add to your routine or throw it in the trash. So first things first, what is apple cider vinegar? Well, it's not some exotic supplement. It's literally just fermented apple juice. You crush apples and you add yeast and the yeast eats the sugar and turns it into alcohol. Now this is where something special happens because bacteria then turn that alcohol into acetic acid. And acetic acid is the star of the show. It's what gives vinegar that sharp smell and that sour taste. And acetic acid is what gives us that therapeutic biological effects that we're gonna talk about. And acetic acid, when measured on the pH scale, which is just a scale that measures how acidic something is, it's about two to three. And to put that in perspective, water is neutral at seven and battery acid is all the way down to one. So apple cider vinegar sits right in that be careful acidic zone. And that's gonna matter later when we talk about precautions with apple cider vinegar, especially when it comes to your teeth and your reflux and just overall safety. So let's start with the strongest evidence that we have for apple cider vinegar, and that is blood sugar control. This is actually where apple cider vinegar shines. And there are several randomized control trials like these that show that apple cider vinegar does have therapeutic effect on glucose control, especially in people with type two diabetes or obesity. In fact, there's a relatively recent meta-analysis of 25 clinical trials that comprised over 1300 participants found that apple cider vinegar consumption could significantly significantly improve fasting blood glucose levels and hemoglobin A1C and triglycerides, with the effects being especially pronounced in folks with diabetes. So why does it work? Well, the key ingredient in apple cider vinegar, the acetic acid, think of it like a mild brake pedal on your digestion. Acetic acid slows down the enzyme in your gut that normally breaks down starches into sugar. So that means instead of a huge blood glucose spike after a meal, the rise in your blood glucose is smaller and slower. And then on a cellular level, Level, acetic acid does a couple of interesting things. One, it makes your muscles more sensitive to insulin. So imagine your muscle cells as doors with locks and insulin is your key. In diabetes, the lock gets rusty and it doesn't turn so easily. So this is where acetic acid can oil that lock a little so insulin can open the door and let more glucose into their muscle cells. And then there's another effect that happens, but this time it's happening in your liver. Normally your liver can pump out extra glucose when it thinks you need it, but with insulin resistance, the liver sometimes overshoots and it adds even more unnecessary sugar into the blood. So apple cider vinegar, and actually a lot of vinegars do this, it can reduce the glucose output. So your fasting blood sugar can come down over time. And here's a concrete example of this. Let's say two people eat a bagel. Without vinegar, blood sugar might shoot up pretty quickly from 90 to let's say 180. But with vinegar before the meal, the peak might be lower at 140 instead. So it's not curing diabetes, but it's lowering the stress on the system. And then there's another fascinating process. Acetic acid can activate an enzyme in your muscles called AMPK, which acts as your body's fuel gauge. And when it turns on, cells shift towards burning fat and using glucose more efficiently. Exercise does this too. So in a way, acetic acid mimics that metabolic effect that you may get from exercise. And it acts on the same AMPK pathway as some diabetes medications like metformin. Now, what about weight? weight loss. Well, there's one decent study out of Japan back in 2009 that was a double blind randomized control trial that showed that 12 weeks of daily vinegar intake, anywhere from 750 to 1500 milligrams of acetic acid, led to a small but a statistically significant reductions in your body weight and fat mass compared to placebo. I think it was about two pounds in the span of three months. But recent systematic reviews and meta-analyses concluded that the overall current evidence is insufficient to recommend apple cider vinegar or acetic acid for weight loss, mainly due to lack of long-term and high quality data. So yes, there may be some effect when it comes to weight loss, but it's not a big one. It's more of a nudge. Okay, but what about fighting infections? Does apple cider vinegar have antimicrobial properties? Well, people have been using vinegar as a disinfectant or as a food preservative for thousands of years. In fact, Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, reportedly prescribed vinegar for colds 
and wounds. And we have in vitro and animal studies that show that apple cider vinegar and acetic acid possess antimicrobial activity against many different pathogens and against bacteria like E. coli and Staph aureus, including MRSA and Pseudomonas and even fungal infections like Candida. So lots of laboratory data, but there's no high quality clinical trials in humans to say that acetic acid can actually help with infections. I also see a lot of claims on social media about longevity and anti-aging benefits, but the existing evidence is limited to animal studies and in vitro experiments. So for example, some studies in aging rats and mice suggest that acetic acid may modulate pathways related to muscle atrophy and mitochondrial function. And there's studies to look into gut microbiome derived acetic acid and how it can improve certain aging related parameters in animal models. And there's even other animal studies that have shown antioxidant and neuroprotective effects of apple cider vinegar, but none of these findings have been confirmed in actual human clinical trials. So unfortunately, there's currently no good human evidence or any strong data to support any of those longevity claims just yet. Okay, let's talk about safety because this is the part that most people ignore. And the biggest concern here is regarding your teeth as it erodes enamel over time, especially if you're sipping vinegar undiluted. So if you wanna add apple cider vinegar to your regimen, here's how to do it safely. Do not take more than one tablespoon per day or no more than 15 milliliters. And you always wanna dilute it in a big glass of water of at least eight or 10 ounces of water. And this is the dose that was most consistently studied in clinical trials. And the best time to consume apple cider vinegar is is before a meal, especially a meal that's heavy in carbs or starches, as that's what's gonna help you to blunt that glucose spike. And always use a straw to drink it to protect the enamel of your teeth. And most people tolerate these doses pretty well, but it can sometimes cause an upset stomach or an irritation in your esophagus or your stomach, especially if you're suffering from gastroesophageal reflux. But the good news is, for the most part, there were no serious adverse effects that have been reported in the literature when apple cider vinegar is used at those doses. But we also don't have any long-term safety data beyond 12 weeks. So we always have to keep that in the back of our minds. And as always, please talk to your doctor before you add this to your regimen to make sure it's safe in your particular situation. So based on the current state of evidence, apple cider vinegar is not a miracle by any means, but it is cheap and it seems to be fairly safe if dosed appropriately, especially in the short term. And when it comes to my own patients, the only setting I recommend apple cider vinegar is if they have issues with insulin resistance resistance like diabetes or prediabetes. But looking at the current state of evidence, it's pretty hard to recommend it for anything else at this point. All right, I hope this was helpful. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one. <music>